Hi guys, it's Jess from Honest Fiction and welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be doing a reactions to my prediction video of The Crown of Gilded Bones by Jennifer L. Armentrout. So if you're familiar with my channel, you know I normally do formal review videos. However, The Crown of Gilded Bones is actually the third in a series, so I figured I'd switch it up and do something different. So a few weeks ago, I posted a predictions video and today I'm going to be watching that video with you guys and pretty much commenting on what I got right versus what I got wrong, and also at the end have a little bit of a spoilery discussion. So I hope you guys enjoy. Alright guys, before we jump into the video, I just want to tell you how this reaction video is going to work. So I will be playing my prediction video and then randomly stopping it and telling you if I was right or wrong and just my overall feelings. And then after that is over, there'll be a section of just my thoughts on the book as a whole, what I enjoyed, what I liked, what I didn't like. So I hope you guys enjoy. Also, if you're new to my channel, I post new videos on Tuesday and Sunday, and if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to my channel. Also, if you enjoy this bookish content, you can hit that notification bell to be notified whenever I post new videos. With that being said, let's get into my reactions. Alright guys, I'm going to be starting this video off at the Alistair slash Craven timestamp, and let's go. He starts off seeming like he likes Poppy and cares about her, but it seems like he's really trying to drive a wedge between Hawk and Poppy. I'm pretty sure he was who was behind when Beckett ended up luring Poppy into that like group attack. So I noticed on my reread that Beckett only, or Poppy only senses fear from Beckett when Beckett is around Alistair. So when Poppy first meets Beckett, he just seems like a happy go lucky like kid slash pup. And then he, she saves him, fixes his legs, still no fear. But then later when they're in the dining area and Beckett is serving Poppy, she senses fear from him. This is after the incident um, that happened where he, Poppy fixed his legs, but also Alistair is right next to Poppy. So maybe he's actually sensing fear from Alistair. I know they are related. I think Beckett's like his great nephew or so they're somehow related. So I think Alistair is the one who convinced Beckett to kind of set Poppy up. Possibility. All right, so I'm gonna stop there. So, kinda right, kinda wrong. So, it turns out that Beckett isn't really Beckett. He was Jensen, who I totally forgot who this character was. I actually had to go back. He is the, uh, I think, captain or leader of the Rise Guard, and he's actually the one who gets Hawk brought into Carcedonia, and they're kinda working together. So we find out that Jensen is actually a shapeshifter, and him and Alist Alistair are working pretty much to like get Poppy out of there. They don't trust Poppy. And they decide to drug Beckett and have uh, Jensen take his place and shapeshift into him. Unfortunately, it does not go as planned and Beckett ends up being killed by Alistair or Jensen. I'm not sure which one kills him. And then Jensen takes Beckett's place and he is actually the one who lures Poppy into that group attack. Beckett had nothing to do with it. I was really sad to hear that Beckett was killed. But yeah, so that guess was kind of right, kind of wrong. I'll give myself like half points there. Also, Alistair and Victor, there's some kind of connection there. I honestly have no idea how this would work. I know that Victor was married and lost his wife and child. I think it's mentioned, I meant to look this up on my reread and I just like didn't catch it, that Victor had a brother at some point that like disappeared, but I don't think that timeline works out for Alistair and Victor. The only reason I think they're um, somehow connected or related is because Jennifer L. Armentrout keeps referencing that Poppy recognizes Alistair's voice and that his voice seems familiar. Now, does the voice seem familiar because Poppy keeps having these dreams and she remembers this man who also has a familiar voice. Now this could be Alistair's voice saying that, doing this very creepy poem that's like, pick a Poppy, watch it bleed. So my thoughts, and this could be wrong, obviously all Not of this wrong. could be wrong. I think that Alistair actually was sent to help Poppy's parents escape the Ascended because that is something he was known to do and that he ended up finding out that Poppy is actually a deity or a demigod or something which is a threat to uh, Queen and King Denier's throne. So he ends up betraying them. I think that's what happened. Now I also have questions over if Poppy... Okay, so... Before we get into the Craven, 
So that is right. Alistair did know that Poppy was actually a deity or a god. Well, a deity. I don't think they realized she was a god yet. But, and Alistair ends up not attacking her, not sending anyone in to attack her, but actually allowing the Craven to enter the area. So he doesn't protect her and kind of knows that she's going to be killed um, because she is a threat to the Deniers and them ruling Atlantia. And it turns out that Alistair was kind of responsible for killing a lot of Malek's children because they were deities and he didn't want them around. So, kind of right. And Alistair, and I'm sorry, and Hawk's mother did find out about this, but not until after it had already happened. So, kind of right there, kind of wrong. It is um, Alistair's voice that she hears in her dreams, however, I don't think they're related to Victor. That never was really brought up again, so I don't really know what's going on with that. Poppy was actually attacked by Creedon. So she remembers being attacked, and she says she remembers a lot of blood, and she remembers mist, which we also learned could be from the gods. So was it actually Craven that attacked? Because I feel like they wouldn't just leave bodies all over, like they're blood hungry. Could it have been one Atlanteans that attacked that were sent by Alistair? Could it have been Wolven? Like those make sense. It would also make sense be because Poppy was bitten by the Craven and she didn't turn. So what if she was never actually bitten by Craven? What if it was an Atlantean or a Wolven? I'm not saying they're bad. Okay, so I was totally wrong here. It was 100% Craven, and we find out the reason she didn't turn is because she's actually a god. She is de descended from Malek, who is descended from Nykos, who is a primal god. So she's essentially a god. I think they're called primal gods. Um, so she's essentially a god. So she's not gonna turn if she gets bit by Craven. So it does make sense. And it wasn't Wolven or Atlanteans that attacked. It was the Craven, led by the Dark One. Not the Dark One Castile. We're not actually sure who this Dark One is yet. Um, I have some theories, but we're not sure. So let's keep going. But I'm just saying that maybe they were working with Alistair for the good of the Deniers. Next up is the woman in the red pearl. So in the first book, a woman that is described with having black hair, uh, tan skin, and I think golden eyes tells Poppy to go upstairs and that's where she inevitably meets Hawk. So who was this woman? Because at first we think that she is working with Hawk, but Hawk has no, doesn't know who she is. So I've seen some things out there that she could be an Atlantean, which is very possible. The way she's described that does sound like an Atlantean, but it also seems like Hawk slash Castile would have known her if that were the case. Then I've seen someone say that she is a god, which also could be a possibility. I mean, we find out in the second book that gods can appear to Poppy, like she has that um, ability. So was it a god or was it the first maiden? I think I saw this on a Facebook group. Um, I will link uh, the theory because it's not my theory. I saw someone else say it, that she was the original maiden maybe and like she escaped and she's trying to help Poppy out. So. That's a possibility. I think that's kind of interesting. I am leaning towards God at the moment, but we will see. Well, I was wrong and I actually saw someone post the correct theory and I was like, that is such a stretch. We find out the woman in the red pearl was actually Miss Wilhelmina Collins, the creator of the diary that Poppy loves to read. And I don't know how I feel about this. Um, I have mixed feelings. So I do think it's very cool that she became a character. Uh, I do think it's kind of, I don't know. I don't know how I feel about the fact that Castile never knew she existed because she is this Atlantean that has lived for thousands of years. I feel like Castile would have heard her name at some point. Um, yeah, so I don't know how I feel about that. There is, I'm sorry to think that there was no first maiden. Um, we're not really sure what's going on with that. And she wasn't a god. She was just a very, very old Atlantean. So I did think that was kind of a fun twist. Like I said, I'm not really sure how I feel about it, but yeah, so I was completely off on that theory. But we will see where that... Also, I just want to say, it is so awkward watching myself on video. So typically I post these videos and then forget about them and I don't rewatch them. And it's, it's interesting. <laughs> very interested. I hope we find out in the Crown of Gilded Bones. Next up is Poppy's brother, and I have no idea what they're gonna do with that, and also Castile's brother, Malik. So I feel like either we're gonna see Malik and he is gonna be completely destroyed and just not at all what Castile remembers, and Castile's gonna end up having to like 
murder him or pick between Poppy and his brother because I think his brother, if he's been in captivity as long as like they're saying, his mind should just be completely warped at this point. But there's also the possibility that Castile or that Malik could be almost like not almost brainwashed by the ascended maybe and that he was supposed to marry poppy during her ascension i saw that theory and i thought that was kind of interesting i don't know if that's actually going to play out but that would be i have no idea how excited i was when i when uh, malik comes out and he's like looking fresh and clean and i was like oh my god that theory was right like she was totally supposed to marry malik for her ascension and yeah so Called it there, was very excited about that. I think my reasoning was wrong. I think I said because they want to like make more Atlantean babies. Um, the actual reason is because Poppy is the heir to the Atlantean throne. If she marries Malek, then they have a very strong claim and like no one's gonna stop them from ruling and then they can pretty much hand it over to Isbeth. So yeah, I thought that was really cool. I was really happy that I got that theory right. Kind of cool that did happen that like or not if that happened I don't want that to happen but if like that was what they were planning for like those two to get together and almost create like more Atlanteans for them to like use I don't know it's kind of messed up but that's a possibility Ian I don't know what's going on with Ian I feel like Ian at this point obviously is turned into a vampire he's turned into an ascended um, I think Poppy's gonna have to make a really hard choice as to what to do with her brother I think that he is past helping at this point i think if he already kind of i know he didn't choose to become a vampire but obviously like he had to feed on people if he's still alive i think he's kind of past the point of no return um i'm very excited and i really hope we get to see what happened with ian in this next book um that is something that i really had hoped was going to happen in a kingdom of flesh and fire and it didn't so i'm very excited to see what goes on in the crown of gilded bones but like i said i don't think ian is going to be able to be saved i think like Boy, was I wrong. So, um, it turns out that Ian is a vampire, so that was all correct. However, he's really kept his goodness and he's actually in it, like he's trying to help Poppy throughout the book. So that was, I was so wrong. Um, also, unfortunately, Ian is killed at the end of this book by Isbeth. And honestly, I was kind of happy because when they said kill him, and it's like the guards like weren't moving towards Castile. I was like, oh my God, they're gonna kill Kieran and I'm not gonna be okay. Like I would have lost it. And then they kill Ian. And I was like, this is really sad. I feel bad for Poppy, but like, thank you. It was not Kieran because <laughs> don't want anything bad to happen to that guy. So anyway, I was wrong. Um, Ian was good, but he is unfortunately dead. He's, like I said, past the point of no return. This is just a random question that I really want to answer, but what is inside the ring? There is an engraving that Poppy can't read on her wedding ring, and I'm just so curious as to what that engraving says. I really hope we find out in the Crown of Gold of Bones. Um, I just, I can't wait. I'm really excited to find that out. All right, final theory is that I guess I just have to keep waiting. <laughs> so I have no idea uh, what is in that ring. They don't say it. I'm hoping the next book they will clarify. Actually, my favorite theory, and it's really out there. So. We know that King Malik had an affair with Isbeth, and that's what created the first vampire. What if Isbeth was pregnant and she had a daughter, and it turned out that Isbeth was actually Queen Ileana, and that daughter ended up having Poppy? So that would mean Isbeth slash Queen Ileana's granddaughter is Poppy. It also so let's pause here. So we do find out that Ileana is Isbeth. Um, they are one of the same. She was pregnant. She had a son, but that son was, we think, possibly killed. I have a theory on that. And she was um, not turned into a vampire. She's actually like this god, not god, she's like a deity hybrid type thing. So we also find out that Hawk's mother knew about this the entire time and kind of kept it a secret from everyone and actually ended up putting... Malik in it she ended up in I'm sorry Hawk's mother ended up entombing Malik so she's known where Malik is this entire time as well so it fits because we know that Malik cheated on Castile's mom and Castile's mom knew about all of this so what if she sent Alistair to destroy that line makes perfect sense and that would explain why Alistair like wanted to or why I think Alistair would want to get rid of Poppy. She knew that she was descended from Malik's line. So I think that's a possibility. So that's not actually correct, but I'm close. So 
Alistair did realize that Poppy was descended from Malik's line and did help in the killing of her family and he thought he also helped in the killing of her. However, Hawk's mom, the queen, didn't know until after the fact. So, kinda, kinda right, kinda wrong. Also, it doesn't exactly go with the whole Nikos thing because I do think she's somehow related to Nikos, but I do really like this theory. So, I don't know. It just makes a lot of sense. So, we will see if that happens in the next book. So, it does actually go with the Nikos thing very well. It turns out that Poppy is the daughter of Isbeth and also the daughter of not Malik, like we think earlier in the book, but Malik's, I think, twin brother, if I read the ending right. And they are both, uh, Malik and his twin brother, are both descended from Nico, Nikos, who is a primal god. So it actually all does make perfect sense. All right, guys, that's Oh, that was it. All right, so those are my reactions. I think I did pretty good with my theories. Uh, some of them were way off, some of them were really close. And that's it. So now I'm just gonna jump into the discussion of my overall thoughts of this book. All right, so this is just gonna be my thoughts on the book as a whole. Um, like I said earlier, I loved this book so much. The action was just non-stop. Like it starts off with Alistair kidnapping Poppy. You think that Hawk's dead. You think that Kieran's dead and you're just freaking out. And then you find out that they're actually alive, but Alistair is gonna give Poppy back to the, uh, Alistair's gonna give Poppy back to the Ascended, and like it never stops. The action just keeps going and going. And I feel like the last book I was, I still loved A Kingdom of Flesh and Fire. However, I just didn't think it was as gripping as From Blood and Ash. And it was a little bit of a letdown for me. The Crown of Gilded Bones, 100% made up for that. I love this book. Um, we find out so much about the gods and like the history and just the fact that Jennifer L. Armitrout like thought about all of this like, I don't know, I feel like she had these ideas from the beginning and like we're just seeing it unfold and it's great. Um, yeah, I love this book and I could talk about this book all day. Writing style is still good. My one critique is I do think it is a little info dumpy at like parts. So instead of kind of allowing us to find things out for ourselves, it's really characters just kind of like telling other characters a bunch of info. I think that could have been done a little better. That is such a small gripe. Honestly, the book overall, I love. I really don't rate books. If I did rate books, I would say five stars. Um, I just enjoyed this so much. Uh, I did notice there was, I'm part of, not part of, I am joined the uh, Facebook group and they mentioned casserole as Cass. Uh, it's like a little inside joke. I did notice she put that in the book. I don't know how I feel about that. It kind of took me out of the story a little bit. Uh, we find out that Miss Willa Collins, like I said, was actually the woman in the red pearl. I think I would have liked her just to have been like the naughty journal. I don't think I needed her as a character unless they had planned for her to be a character all along. I don't know. It felt a little random, but like I said, overall, I really enjoyed this book. Uh, Please let me know in the comments if you, if anyone wants to talk about this book with me, I am down. I will talk about this book all day and that's it. So like I said before, I post new videos every Tuesday and Sunday. And if you haven't yet, please like and subscribe to my channel and I will see you guys next week. Bye.